For most of us, there are certain muscles that seem to grow quickly from bare minimum efforts. There are others, however, that seem to lag behind no matter how hard we train them. Fortunately, I have created a series of science-based steps that you can take to blow up any muscle group fast. Before we jump into those strategies, however, let's first discuss who this specialization training is for. If you're a beginner or even intermediate lifter who hasn't intelligently and consistently trained for at least two or three years, then you do not have weak muscle groups. Your entire body is weak. That said, I recommend that you focus on building overall muscle mass. On the other hand, if you're an advanced lifter who's been in the gym for a while and can clearly see that his calves, delts, chest, or biceps have fallen behind, then here are five simple strategies you can implement to blow up any lagging muscle. Tip number one, develop a mind-muscle connection. One study published in the European Journal of Sports Science compared an internal focus group that focused on squeezing the target muscle and an external focus group that focused on just lifting the weight up. They found that the internal focus group or the group focusing on the mind-muscle connection gained twice as much muscle in both the biceps and quads when compared to the group who simply lifted the weight. This landmark research tells us that the mind-muscle connection is real. By simply focusing on contracting a muscle, you place more tension on those fibers and, as a result, experience greater muscle gains. That said, there is one caveat. Focusing on the mind-muscle connection during heavy compound lifts could actually hinder your results. For example, if you're attempting to perform a set of deadlifts with 80% of your 1 rep max for say 5 reps, focusing too much on feeling the muscle may result in less force causing you to perform fewer reps. And because volume is the key driver of hypertrophy, this could be detrimental to your overall progress. That's why I suggest you save the mind-muscle connection for moderate to high rep lifts, preferably isolation exercises, rather than the big heavy compound movements. Tip number two, train your lagging muscle first. Research published in Sports Medicine found that muscles trained at the beginning of a workout result in greater strength and muscle gains. If you think about it, this makes perfect sense. You've probably noticed in your own training, the exercises you perform at the beginning of your workout are typically the ones that progress the fastest. For example, if your shoulders are lagging behind, your goal should be to bring up your overhead press. And one of the fastest ways to do this is to place the overhead press at the beginning of your workout while you're at your freshest. The same goes for any other lagging muscle group. If your calves refuse to grow, try starting your workouts with calf raises while focusing on progression. Like I mentioned earlier, however, if you've been training for less than 5 years, you probably don't want to prioritize calf training over squatting heavier. Tip number three, increase training volume. One study published in Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise compared doing one set, three sets, and five sets per exercise. The total weekly number of sets per muscle group for the upper body and lower body were six and nine for the one set group, 18 and 27 for the three set group, and 30 and 45 for the five set group. According to the study, the more sets they performed, the more muscle they built, at least to a degree. One 12 week German volume training study compared doing five sets per exercise versus 10 sets per exercise in a single workout. They concluded that doing more than five sets per exercise doesn't seem to promote more strength or hypertrophy gains. In other words, although more volume typically does result in greater muscle gains, there does seem to be a ceiling. To put it simply, the amount of volume you perform should be dependent on factors like training experience, 
genetics, stress, and most importantly, your body's ability to recover from the stimulus. This is why I'm a huge advocate of properly planned training where volume is increased gradually over time. For example, if you've been performing 14 sets of chest per week to no avail, bumping it up to 16 sets for the next 4 to 6 weeks could be a good idea. Tip number 4 increase your training frequency. Eventually, you will reach a point at which you can't realistically perform more volume in a given workout. So, rather than just adding more sets to your existing workouts, simply increase the frequency at which you train that lagging muscle. For example, if you're hitting your chest twice per week for a total of 16 sets, you may be splitting your chest training into two days where you're performing eight sets. Although this may work at first, you will eventually need to bump that up to 20 sets per week. But rather than hitting the chest for 10 sets split into two training days, you may find that you're able to recover and progress faster if you split those 20 sets into three separate days. Aside from being a simple way to increase total volume, increasing training frequency works for two reasons. First, increasing training frequency for a lagging muscle also lets you boost the number of times you stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Research shows that MPS is more than doubled at about 24 hours following a workout. By the 36 hour mark, however, it is dropped back down to baseline. By hitting a muscle three times per week instead of twice, you're stimulating an anabolic response more frequently. And second, it has been shown that when training a muscle group more frequently, at least to a degree, we increase our ability to recover and adapt. This is known as the repeated bout effect. That said, training your lagging muscle group two to three times per week would actually increase your ability to recover between bouts. The more we can train a specific muscle group in a week while being able to recover from the stress, the more time we spend synthesizing protein for that particular muscle. Tip number five, keep adaptive proclivity high. If, for example, your legs are lagging behind and you've been focusing on the squat for, say, the last six months, your training may develop a staleness. So although you are gradually adding more weight to the squat or slowly increasing the volume, you may not build muscle as fast as possible due to things like neuromuscular adaptations causing you to become more efficient at a given exercise. In that case, I recommend changing the overload variant or substituting the squat for something like a leg press for the next two or three months. This will cause the adaptive proclivity to rebuild, thus making the squat more effective once you reintroduce it into your training. And although the amount of weight you're able to squat may decrease, the adaptations made once you begin to overload with this movement will be greater. So there you have it. Five simple ways to blow up any lagging muscle group. Remember, specialization training isn't for everyone, but if you're an advanced lifter who's ready to bring up a muscle group that has fallen behind, follow these five steps and you'll have no problem sculpting the perfect physique. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Are you looking for a complete, done-for-you training and nutrition guide guaranteed to add slabs of muscle to your frame in the next 90 days? Then claim your free copy of my book, Bulk Up Fast. The book has already been paid for. All you have to do is cover the small shipping fee. Just click the link in the description, tell me where to ship it, and I'll send it to you anywhere in the world. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos, and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.